All right, guys. So this is the video that I never did. You know, the shit I forget every time. And um, yeah, we'll see if we can make this happen. And we'll see if I remember everything and the words for the shit that I'm talking about. So three chambers. That's the thing. You know, everything is, as I said in my last video, everything is requests. And I've got requests with pre chambers, but earlier. And I forgot it. So, so let's talk pre chamber mod because people are uh, modifying their pre chambers in different ways. And it can be the ball, or it can be uh, drilling out the. Uh, the holes in the pre-chamber to make them larger in specific ways. So the pre-chambers on our 604, 605 and 606 engines are made of unobtainium. That's the shit that beats kryptonite. So they are hard as fuck and they will last forever. And the pre-chamber mods is more or less useless. All the power you need, you can do with your stock pre-chambers. You will not, not get any advantages of modifying them. And they will, as I said, never break. And, you know, the the ball thing. I mean, it's, it's really cool that you can buy these aftermarket balls. Nothing wrong in that. Will they give any additional power or reliability? No. They are new though, and your old ones are 25 years old. So, yeah, of course. But, hmm, unobtainium, you know, outlives uranium. Is it the name in English? Yeah. What the fuck? What do you make nuclear bombs of? And that has a half thing time in what the fuck I don't know in English doesn't matter so your pre chambers will not fail not even 25 years year old pre chambers and modifying them will not give you anything except a thinner wallet so next thing on the fueling list is injector nozzle swap because Everybody likes to talk about different numbers on their injectors and I bought these from India and this is some brand Boise, I don't know. If your nozzles are bad, then you need to replace them, yes. Will you find nozzles that give you any advantages over stock? No. Yes. Yes, you will. Because if you buy a, an OM604, there are clone injectors made by Lucas in those engines. And they are visually similar. And the parts swap over. But they can't flow shit. So if you have a 604, you need normal Bosch injectors. So yes, you can do a fucking nozzle swap on your Lucas injectors and have good injectors. But for all the other people, the 99.999999% of the OM60X people, you will not have an issue and the stock nozzles will flow anything you give them. So injector nozzle swap, unnecessary. Thinner wallet, that's what it is. Yeah, I think I touched this subject in another video. It's um, the 20 kilo flywheel shit. Yes, stop. I will not even talk about it. Yes, stop that fucking lunatic, insane maniac thing. All right. And cooling mod. Everybody knows that the 606 overheats like a motherfucker. So you need to do the cooling mod. Or 
do you? Does the cooling mod give additional cooling? Not so much. It's perfect for us Garrett people because we have a perfect inlet outlet for our water cooled uh, turbo. So that's what we use it for. For anything else, pretty useless. So uh, there are cooling hacks. You know the the F two and high flow head gasket, of course, but but that's that's more you know it's, it's not for everybody because not everybody pops the head head of the engine. But if you do, you can buy a, a head gasket that solves a lot of the heating issue. There are some other hacks. I will not go into that now because some are for me and some are for everybody. But you need to think about your cooling because they will overheat like a motherfucker. Electric fuel pump. Yeah, I just had an issue with a guy that had... Uh, some problem with this. Uh, he didn't have an electric fuel pump, but we're touching the subject, you know. An electric fuel pump is not, uh, the, it depends on your injection pump, but it's not really necessary because most of you guys run low power and you can handle just fine with, uh, with a lift pump. We done in the Dyno 518.9 or something. Uh, with a stock lift pump was not stock filter housing and so on and was dual inlets to the to the injection pump and and whatnot everything was absolutely full it was everything was done except that we didn't replace the lift pump and we actually did more on the street uh, if we look at yeah other numbers but it doesn't matter so you can do a lot of power with the lift pump the electric fuel pump will give you some advantages. Priming, you know, and the fucking uh, bleeding air of the, out of the fucking diesel system. Who the fuck cares? You turn your key, electric pump goes, happy days, start your car. So, I mean, that's, that's an advantage. Another thing is, and this is actually something that we, we uh, did at, the diesel mechan with uh, Yaran uh, and I love you Yaran your motherfucker is you're the best and we were at diesel mechan and we tried fuel pressure in the fuel pump and Yaran he doesn't really he's not afraid for anything you know so he just he just run his test benches it's it's like you stand back and whew, very good uh, so he turned up the fuel pressure till we couldn't move the rack and we tried this for quite quite a while with different fuel pressures and so and and the fun thing was that more fuel pressure will give a the rack will be harder to move and that's amazing information you know because some of the problems with these mechanical high power pumps is that the throttle linkage or what we're going to call it moves very very freely so it, it's just a little bump in the road and pum 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 and the engine will just run away for it so the electric fuel pump and three bars of fuel pressure will give you a little bit more sanity you know it will it will provide more fuel on full load, of course, when you're doing watts, but it will also give you a little bit better idle. It will give you a smoother ride in low RPM. And I mean, it's only beneficial in every way. So electric fuel pump is the shit, but you have to think about how you route this, um, this fuel system. The, because you can't, you can't use that much of your stock uh, stuff. 
like the return banjo for example is is uh, what the fuck you say in English uh, it's very very fucking small with a ball and a shit in it so restricted so and uh, so you can't use that you need a full flow banjo on the return line and you need a fuel pressure regulator on the return line and you treat your pump yes like a fuel rail on a on a petrol car so it's full flow in and on the return line is a fuel pressure regulator and from that pressure regulator you go to your return to your tank or cash tank or what the fuck you have another thing is injector return the injector return line can't be on any line with any kind of pressure not even a pressure on the return line after the fuel pressure regulator so if you run an electric fuel pump with three bars of fuel pressure you need a separate line to the tank from the injectors other than that it's straightforward you know so do the electric fuel pump mod that's a good one clutch kits this is a fun thing and we can we can combine that with the with the next topic that is adapters uh, i'm not a fan of adapter plates at all because they change so much in uh, on the engine the you know someone designed these engines from the beginning and there are measurements and tolerances that need to be met and with an adapter plate you move everything 10 20 millimeters and everything is off i don't like that so that's why we run the welded gearboxes instead of the adapters so we can run any gearbox on any engine it doesn't matter we just take the engine we cut it and we weld it and what we get is that we get the correct measurements everywhere so everything is a stock that works better but that's adapters so I don't like it. It's very, very easy for you, but it's not really a good solution. The clutch kit, on the other hand, I see a lot of people running Mercedes six-speed gearboxes. And they all have short input shaft. That means that the pilot bearing for the input shaft is in the flywheel. But many people don't know this. And they run a single mass flywheel and that is made for without this pilot bearing so it's made for for a long input shaft that centers in the crank and that's not working you know it's of course it works for a day or two or three but shit gonna break because that's not how it's supposed to be the input shaft needs to be centered and you know if it moves around shit go bad so that's something you really really need to think about you know what kind of gearbox am i running if you have a six speed mercedes gearbox after your 606 you have a short input shaft so you need to think about what kind of clutch kit you buy flywheel that is but you buy the fucking kit so um yeah i think that's all it's 14 minutes i had a little list on the side because i don't remember shit so the list is done it's 14 minutes happy days i see you another day